Okay. You guys want to know what the canner set is? Sure. Cool. All right. So the way you make a canner set is you take an interval. Uh, I'm just going to say from zero to one, including the ends. Okay. So this is step zero. Right. Okay. Next step, you take the middle third of that interval, cut it out, and throw it away. So I'm going to have a new interval that's going to go from zero to one three three one third right so i got zero up to one third this is included in there and then i'm going to have a blank spot because i took that part out threw it away and then over here this one's going to pick up again at two thirds two thirds and it's going to go up to one and stop so that's going to be step one right sorry did you say that it it, it can be any like any any interval or, or from zero to one so specifically, I'm going to start with the interval from 0 to 1. You could make a similar object by starting with any old interval and removing the middle. Okay, I was thinking you did 0 to 1 because binary, but never mind. Yeah, kind of I did. Okay. Um, yeah, this is motivated a little bit by binary stuff, but um, I don't want to fall down that particular rabbit hole. The Cantor set is a rabbit hole that goes a really long way down. Uh, so this was a remove middle third, right? Like that's what I did there. Okay, then the next step, I'm gonna remove the middle thirds of what's left. Right, so I'm gonna treat each of these guys like I treated that one and do the same thing. So that's gonna go from zero up to, how long is the middle third of an interval that's one to a third, one or six. zero to a third? One six. Close. It is a nine, ah. right? A third of a, a third, third, yeah, third is a nine. So I'm going to go from zero up to a nine. And then this other bit is going to go from two nines up to a third. You can see that? So I did that same thing, right? I did a remove middle third here. And I'm going to do a remove middle third here. You guys see that? And that guy's going to do from two thirds up to two thirds is how many ninths? Good, mumble that louder, Jacob. I said six ninths, so I think it does go to seven, seven ninths? Perfect. So two thirds is six ninths, one more ninth brings you to seven ninths. And then this guy is going to go from something up to one. Eight ninths to one. Eight ninths. Cool. And then I'm going to do the same thing again, right? So that was step two, right? Where I removed the middle thirds from the thirds that were left after I removed the middle third. And now in the next step, I'm going to remove the middle thirds from what's left. You guys see this? So in the end here, what am I going to be left with? Like if I just continued this process forever, what are you going to be left with? And increasing the increasingly small intervals, and kind, of, kind of a large gap in between the two sets. Two yeah, there's going to be like areas. some speckly dust left, right? Yeah. You guys all see that? At the very least, that stuff's going to include zero. Why is zero still going to be left in there? Because it's the starting point. Yes, yeah, the starting point. You're never going to remove that because it's never going to be in the middle third, right? You guys see that? What else is never going to be in the middle third? One. One. Okay, so at the very least, I'm left with a couple of things. What else is going to be in there? One third and two thirds, right? Oh, good. Yeah, one third and two thirds are still going to be left in there. I have another question. Sure. Why the fuck would you do this to yourself? What is the point of this? Why would you do this to yourself? Yes. So this is an object that we use to explore the different sizes of infinity. That's a fun thing. <laughs> so did you guys know that, that infinity is, comes that in is sizes? Yes, I, this, know. I know. The new thing. So. 
there's this kind of infinity where you have like one, two, three, four, five, and kind of continuing on, right? So space between one and two. So this is what we call countable infinity. And so a countable infinity is where you can label the things in that infinity in some kind of order, right? There is such a thing as an uncountable infinity, which would be things like the real numbers. Okay, so then it becomes an interesting question. In the end here, it's clear that there are at least infinitely many things, right? There are at least four, obviously, right? And then all of these endpoints that keep cropping up at every stage, those are going to stay in there, right? Yeah. So down here at the end, I'm going to have zero and a ninth and two ninths, but also a 27th, right? Yeah, and then also in here, there's going to be an 81st and on and on and on, right? There's going to be a lot of little dots in there, right? And then we can figure out which other ones are going to be in there. But there are going to be a lot of things that look like one over, there are going to be all of these guys at the very least, one over three to the ends. Those will be the left end point of the first interval. You guys see that? So there will be a whole mess of those. There's infinitely many of these at least. And then there's some more. It would be a reasonable question to ask, is what I'm left with here, right, which is lots of little dots, kind of concentrated up in some weird spots, is that one of these things where you can count how many there are, or is it one of these things where you can't count how many there it's are? Uncountable. It does turn out to be uncountable. That's a tough argument. I'm not going to make it today, but it's true. It's cool that. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do today is take this idea and use processing to make a picture of what's left down here that's better than the one I'm drawing on the board. You guys cool with that?
Okay. So the problem I was having is that I have an interval looks like this. It's A and then this length is B, right? You guys see that? So this starts at A and then it's B long. Okay. So I think I need to figure out where the middle thirds of this thing are, right? Okay, so this guy here, right, the middle third, where is that? From one third B to two third B. Yeah, it seems like, so one third B is how wide this part is, right? You guys see that? And where does it start? At A. At A. So that first, that left endpoint should be at A plus one third B. You guys see that? Where should this guy be? A plus two thirds B. Right? You guys cool that? And then, okay, so this guy should be my new B value, right? Oh, I see what my problem is. Do you guys catch my problem yet? B minus A? Yeah, it's the B minus A's, right? I was treating this like those were the beginning and the end of my interval, even though in the comments I wrote above that A is the start and B is the width. You guys see that? That was just sheer dumb on my part. You guys with me? Yeah. So the code's working just fine. It's just a logic error, right? Why did I crop up with this logic error? In other words, what about shitty code writing have I demonstrated today? You use pseudocode? Yeah, I didn't make any pseudocode, right? You see that? I was just making these calculations on the fly as I was writing the code. So of course I cropped up with a logic error. You guys see that? So let me write some pseudocode and then we'll go back and implement our pseudocode. So what should I do for my, really this is pseudocode just for that remove middle thirds method, right? Okay, so what do I actually want to take? I think I need to decide whether I want the beginning and the end of the interval or the beginning and the width. How does drawing a rectangle work? Yeah, for the rectangle chunk of processing, right? It takes the beginning and the width. So I may as well write this as beginnings and widths. You guys see that? So I'm gonna think A is the beginning. of my rectangle. Really, that's going to be an x coordinate, right? And then what's your other variable going to be? I was calling it b, right? And b was a fundamentally crappy choice because it kept screwing me up, right? So what should I call that thing instead of b? What would be a more descriptive label for that? Yeah, I'd call it something with a W, right? I already had Y assigned as something. Oh, what the hell. Let me use Y. And I'll get rid of the Y that I've got in there. Is with me on this? Okay, so I've got a, what's A? A should be a float. Float. And Y should be a float. float. And these guys are together the, what am I intending to do with those? The inputs to the removal. Good. Those are going to be my inputs. Right, so I have inputs. They're a float A that's the beginning of the rectangle and a float Y that's the width of the rectangle. Not the rectangle to be removed, but the rectangle on which I'm going to do the removals. Okay, so then over here I have my picture, right? So I should have this whole distance, right, is W. 
and then this, my thirds are these guys. And I'm not going to call that shit new B anymore because that got confused. Cool. Feels good with this. Okay. So, now I think I need better variable choices. So what variables are, am I going to need in here? Yeah, I think I need a something like a new width. Right? Or maybe I'll just call it new y since the other one's called y. How are you going to make new y? Okay. In other words, after you remove the middle thirds, how long are the rem remnants going to be? Wide over three. Right, because after I remove the middle third, I'm going to be looking at these two guys. You guys put me on that? So I'm going to have new y. That's going to be y over 3. So what variable type should that be? That should be a float. You guys see that? OK. What else do I need? I'm going to need the left ends of those two green things, right? What should I call those? There's two of them. And what part are they playing? What part was the left end of my original? It was a, what did I call that thing? A. I called that A, right? Right. One of those is actually just going to be A again, right? What's this other one? Oh. It's going to be like a new A, right? Yeah. You guys see that? So there's going to be like a new A, and there's also a, yeah, there's the old A. Old A should be really easy. That should just be the regular A, right? Do I really need to relabel this? Probably not. Probably not. Okay, so I probably don't need that. What should the new A be? Where was that one? I think that was this end point here, right? So that's two thirds of the width of the rectangle plus the starting point. So that should be A plus two thirds. And then is it wide or new wide that I want here? Should be wide. And then what category of object should that be? Float. That should be a float. Oops, float. I still can't spell float. That's super fun. It's not just crappy typing spells. It's just that I don't know how to spell float. All right, so these are my variables, right? What is my, like, what's the pseudocode part of this? I got all my variables decided, I think. Then what? What do I want to do with this? Once I calculated all these variables. So I know this endpoint is A. How wide is this guy? The new one, the green one. A plus minus one third width. I think that's more complicated than. Yeah, so. It goes up to one third width, right? So it is itself, like this distance is one third W wide, right? Which is the what's this? Do I have a name for that? Yeah, that was new wide, right? Right. So this rectangle starts at A and is new wide wide. This other rectangle starts at, what was A plus 2 thirds wide? What was that? 
This whole dude is called. That's new A, right? And how wide is that rectangle? That's also one third wide, which is new wide, right? So this guy is one third wide, and that is new wide. You guys with this? Kinda? Okay, so at the end of my pseudocode here, I've done, I've said what I'm t inputting, what I'm calculating, and then what am I going to actually get the method to do? Um, I cycle through that. Yeah, it needs to cycle through this stuff, right? So I think it needs to do three things down here. What's the first thing it needs to do? You guys fully lost on what I'm trying to do here? Yeah? <laughs> okay, so originally, right, I have my big black rectangle, right? And then what was my goal? Take out the middle three. I need to take out the middle third, right? So I'm going to call, remove middle third on that stuff. You guys see that? So I'm going to call middle third, remove middle third on the whole thing. And to actually get the middle third removed, what do I need to do? Draw over. Yeah, I need to draw a white rectangle over the top. So there should be draw white rectangle from, so if that's A and that's B, new y to new A. so new y to between those two points. So I need to draw a new rec, a white rectangle from a third of the way to two thirds of the way, right? Because what's the other? So that rectangle starts where? One third wide. Yep, that starts at A plus one third wide, right? And how long does that rectangle have to be? How wide is this? One third wide. Yeah, that's one third of the width, right? Okay. You guys see that? Oh, and I keep labeling this other endpoint B. But really, all I know is that it's wide, wide. I don't know what the other end point is. You guys with me? Did I lose you again? Okay, what should your next step be? Program. No. <laughs> so far, I've taken out the, the middle third. I was at that step a long time ago. I was having trouble with my recursion, right? Right. So there was something wrong with my recursive step. What was wrong with my recursive step? It I was it just didn't go in the other direction. Yeah, I was kind of I wasn't careful with where I was removing rectangles. So where do you want to remove the next rectangle? So on this part, right? Yeah. So you need to call RMT again, right? Remove middle third on Where's that one start? Where's the left end of this first one? A. A. And how wide is that one? New wide. That's new wide. You guys with me on that? Then would you do it again with new A and still new 
Okay, so that one needs to be done on the right hand side. You guys see that? So that needs to be from new A. And then how wide is it? It's still new wide one. You guys with me on this? So what was my problem? Like why wasn't this working before? It was because I had conflated the concept of width, right? I had screwed up width and endpoints. You guys see that? Couldn't you just, for the second one, um, have it draw the starting point at width at wide, and then use negatives to draw it backwards? Yeah, so you could certainly draw this backwards. That would be another valid approach. Cool? Yeah. 